Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm taking you back to the town of Thaxty in Essex here in the UK. And I'm going to paint the lovely Swan Hotel. It stands opposite the church, but I want to take you into the church first. Lovely, magnificent church, almost a cathedral really. remarkable how these uh, old buildings were built really and I know they probably took several several years to build but uh, still amazing how the skills they had with the limited um, tools that they were supplied with fantastic And opposite the church is the Swan Hotel, and this is the view I'm looking to paint. Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Well, I've returned from my trip to Cornwall, and I've come back into my studio, and I've found lots of um, sketches that I did um, from my trip to Thaxted in Essex here in the UK and I did a lovely little um, pencil drawing of a scene that that's the Swan Hotel looking back down the hill that's the church um, and we've got the light coming from behind us and I really want to get round to painting this one so before I do anything else I'm going to show you how to paint this particular subject. I've put my drawing down onto watercolour paper. I do have the photograph that I took on my computer screen, which I will show you very shortly. Well, there's the uh, photograph that I took um, at the time. And uh, as you can see, it's pretty much all there really. Got a nice bit of light coming from behind us. So, you know, I th I'm really looking forward to painting this one. I think that should work quite well. Um, let's see how we get on. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is to damp the sky uh, at the top. Um, that's going to have a bit of light on it. So we'll go around that initially. Anyway, the sign. So I'm damping the top area mainly. There you go. Like that, nice and damp. And the colour that I'm going to use for that is going to be um, Prussian blue with a little cobalt in it. But it's quite a strong blue. It, it's a sunny day. So I'm laying that in. I'm having no real interest in the sky in this one. It's going to be painted very quickly, very freely in just purely the colour of the blue. Paint around the sign there. Once we get down to that sort of area, I'm going to paint around these, uh, the architecture of the church. As you can see, I'm going around that quite neatly. Now I've got into the dry area, and this is the beauty of using a larger brush. You can then damp the brush and spread that through. And gradually, you spread that through and it becomes lighter because I want a lot of light in that lower area. And in actual fact, on a day like 
it was then I'm going to try and get rid of all that blue now from the brush and I'm just going to paint that through painting around the buildings nice and light in the lower area I want to show up plenty of light in that area so that's like that lifting off a bit of color and just to give it a little bit of warmth I'm going in with alizarin crimson just in a streak or two at, at the bottom I don't want to be too heavy with this but just the odd bit of alizarin crimson and there's nothing better than there's nothing easier really than to paint that type of sky and that completes the first process really now we need to allow that to completely dry and while that is drying I'm going to put a little bit of warm color and I call warm color well raw sienna is fairly warm it's not a bad color to use I'm using light red as well I'm putting light wet red with the alizarin crimson um, to start with so I've got a little bit of alizarin in the palette and I'm adding a little bit of light red and I want a bit of yellow there we go and that's the raw sienna a bit more yellow because I want that to to it's going to be a very light very weak orange and all I'm going to do I'm going to sweep over certain parts of the building that corner anywhere that's catching light so this is what I'm looking to do because although these will be different colors shortly um, anywhere that's catching light and where it is light I'm going to use to that I'm going to put a little bit of the, the cadmium yellow because I want these figures and this area here to stand out in real you know that there, there's lots of light on these baskets um, it will all show quite well once we get sorted with everything there we are so that's a nice light tone very very weak um, what else have we got we've got very light in the distance and we'll put a little bit of that on there that is light that's dark and of course the the old church the parts of the architecture of the church and there is a wall coming up there and then in the foreground I'm going to use just pure raw sienna on the road um, with a bit of water obviously and I'm going to create the feeling of see the way I'm using the brush to create the, the feeling of of depth in that road good and that is sets the scene for the whole picture really okay well I'm going to paint a little bit of the distant the sky is dry now I think hopefully now that's the roof of the distant buildings they are uh, red tiles but of course we don't want to show them too red we've got creams on the frontages oh we've got a bit of pink on one of them so let's just use uh, the alizarin crimson for that got a lot of pinks in these cottages um, I think that's all pink there like that and half of that one I think I think there's two cottages there I've not put the windows in but I will do shortly um, so that's that um, then we've got creams okay um, let's use a bit of the raw sienna for the creams I like that as a cream uh, got some creams there will all be shadow later on that's a shrub or a um, bush of some sort so that's worked quite well right you are then okay right now I'm going to paint in the blue of this building the swan now that's Prussian blue I think that's about the sort of blue that we're looking for um, paint around the if we can just picking around a bit of that and I'm not painting the windows at this stage because I want those to be left unpainted 
painting up to the sign. Um, what have we got there? Ah, we've got a corner there. So it's like a blue paint of some sort, like that. We then have a shadow that will be revealed on that corner of that building. But other than that, that seems to work as the first wash. That's looking fine. We then have a, a secondary field there under the windows. Now we need to pick around these they are going to be much lighter but this will have to take another wash of color for obvious reasons because it's not dark enough at this moment but that's that's fine that will work out very very well hopefully all being equal and that's not very often well, everything's equal um, when you're painting as you've probably found out if you've been painting a while um, but having said that we have to um, do the best we can really there we go a little bit there a little bit there some little bits just going on there so that is that and I've still we've allowed the the figures and the parasols unpainted apart from the first wash of color Now these buildings are like a pinky cream colour. Let's just paint all of them. That one's a little deeper in colour, I think. Yeah, just a tad. So I'm using Olizum Crimson with a little bit of um, raw sienna in there. So that's those two buildings put in. They will be in shadow anyway. So that's that. Roofs to go in later on. Um, right, let's put the roofs in. Um, burnt sienna with light red. I want these roofs to, to shine out a bit. I don't want them to be too, too dull. I want them to have a bit of, um, bit of colour, but I don't want them to be too dull. There is a, a, a sloping ridge tile there, but whether we'll be able to um, see that. Adding a little blue to this one just to set it back a little bit. Don't want that to be too prominent. Could be a little more prominent than that, but there you go. There we go. Look at that. So that's those two roofs put in. Uh, they've worked well. Um, the church, I'm working my way across really. The church is like a grey, so we need a yellow, a red. I'm using light red and raw sienna, and I'm putting cobalt blue with that. So that's a mix I used uh, quite extensively, really, um, when I was in uh, Cornwall a few weeks ago. Well, a week ago, basically. And paint that in there. Paint these. A little bit of architecture there. Paint down as far as the yew trees. That stands there. It'll be much darker. And the roof... Not sure whether it's tiled, so I'm going to give it a blue touch. Can't quite remember that, but anyway, that's going to be now. We'll get away with that, and that's also a tiled roof. That's that. Right. Now, this is the fun part, because I want to put in the... Um, we've got a bus going down the hill there, and that is red. So I'm going to use the cadmium red which is quite a nice red um, and to get a nice brilliant red I want that to draw the eye a bit of Indian red gone in it as well because I don't want it to be too too prominent and then we, we we've obviously got a certain amount of light hitting still going to use this large brush for as much as possible Whoops, there you go. Up for as long as I can. There you go. So that's that. Now the, the sunny side, I'm going to leave that 
unpainted at this stage or oh, we've had we've got a couple of whoops there you go that's what you get with a big brush all good fun uh, we've got a, a wing mirror there and a wing mirror there I like the idea of putting those in now we've got the the other car which um, is a real uh, sort of like a four before of some sort and to me there's a bit of blue so I'm going to streak a little bit of blue across the bonnet there it's black but I'm going to streak a little bit of blue down that side too like that now it's black so do you know I'm going to use Prussian blue with Indian red and that will give me a really dark um, this is going to be really dark now because I want to show the light the sunlight on it so it's going to be really really dark okay so we've got the the roof area is dark but of course there's a band around the top and a bit of slope to the sides like that then we have a band that runs across an arc there going to paint around the lights and notice how I'm doing this all with this large brush and that is for a reason because I just don't want it to get too fussy you know it, it, I just want it to be loose and that is my way of trying to keep it loose there we go um, number plate at the front we'll leave and a little bit of balance there before we get to the wheels at the front there we go and what I'm going to do with the other mop brush I'm going to just soften that into that light blue like that just so we've got a tint of that blue there and soft down the corner as well and down that side because that will then show you the the, the the actual turn on the on the whole thing and we've got two wing mirrors one there and one there so they're going to stick out quite nicely um, other than that oh let's go let's put a brown with that because uh, I want it to be dark for the wheels there we go that's a nice dark color and we've got one wheel there that we can see underneath just pick around that and we've got one wheel there make certain they sit on the outside of the vehicle because I've made that mistake a few times and there's another wheel at the back there let's just point this brush up correctly there you go and I think that probably does it let's just get a point on that brush I want to just shape those just that'll be in shadow anyway brilliant so that's that just before we finish I'm going to put in a little bit of this weak color onto the right hand side of that bus there you go and over the top so that we can actually see the sunlit side and of course the um, the dark side now I'm happy with what I've done with that area next area will be the figures we've got all manner of color there um, we've got a blue figure let's just call that cobalt blue sit there we do we have any other blue figures maybe with one two darker figures one there um, and one there that's it now we have other colors uh, a bit of red there one there I put another one in there we're going to have uh, a yellow 
couple of yellows, cadmium. Put another one next to that little chappy or person. <coughs> That's good. And because they're all sitting down, so that uh, seems to work quite well. Now the next thing is the darker figures. So like dark blues. Um, we have uh, one there. That one there would be nice to be dark. And I think maybe standing up. And one there. Don't want the darker figures to be too um, prominent. And then of course they'll be sitting. So we'll put those legs in coming down. Those legs come down there. There we go. And we'll call that figure standing, shall we? That'd be good enough for a figure standing, I think. Just rub that away. There we go. And the heads, well, let's just put dark colour in the heads. Some of them are not dark, but let's just use dark colour there. Colour there, colour there. Let's use uh, a light colour as well. Um, raw sienna. That's got a raw sienna. Let's put a raw sienna on those two. One on there. And put another figure in there with a raw sienna head. There we are. And some of the legs might take a bit of touch of this colour as well. There we are. That's the figures standing or sitting and standing in front of the um, the Swan Inn. Now they've also painted the benches blue. So we've got the bench surface there and there. Just make certain that it comes up blue and not green because we've got some yellows there. So I found that to be the case. There we go. And then I'm going to put the uh, the seating area in. I'm going to put that in the same. I think it's a brown, but I'm putting it in, in as a blue. Because I just feel that that seems to suit. And then, of course, the table legs, really. Which that extends beyond that. And then that comes down there. Uh, down there, down there. Down there and down there. There we are. Now the parasols. Very dark. Dark grey really. So I'm putting in cobalt blue with a little burnt umber. See what we get with that. And it's a bit greeny grey. Okay. Uh, let's use the brush and that will make it even greener. But if I put a raw sienna with that, before I put the brown, what do we get then? Well, it's not perfect. A bit of light red in there. There we go. Oh, that's better. Ah, a bit of cobalt blue. There we go. That's done up. It's a bit of a concoction, but there you go. Um, and what we do, we put in the back edge of these parasols because they are technically the darker of the areas. Then we take some moisture off the brush. We're not putting in that one yet. There we go. And then you just drag across to try and get some shine on those parasols like that. I don't want to lose the light effect that you would do if, and just put a little bit of underneath them. There we are. Um, and then all of a sudden, a real dark, so I'm using cobalt blue with light red. Now that's going to produce the really dark side of these. Just strip down there, like that. Strip down there, strip down there, like that. And then just drag that across, like that. So you've got a couple of tones in there, a little bit of light hitting them. And then with the point of the brush, just mark in 
the undersides like that and that is pretty much the parasols gone in some lighter tone darker tone or whatever to go in shortly and then we've got the posts now they run down like that down like that notice I'm try trying not to be too fussy with these it's always vital that you're not too fussy with um, with detail cars which I think I will add figures and we've got the light coming from behind us as you can see with this shadow so that should be in now the hanging baskets and all of the green areas right so hanging hanging baskets we're going to go in with just cadmium yellow to start with as a green but that's got a bit of blue in there as you can probably see I don't want that to be too dark right then we have some reds in there so I'm putting in a little bit of a little bit of color here just a touch so a little bit of red in all of those clean the brush thoroughly and then some yellow well that's going to be cadmium yellow again just to try and it's just a suggestion as you can see and then the cadmium yellow in actual fact you can't see the baskets that they hang on because of the hanging arrangement from the planting there we go look at that so that is probably good enough for the hanging baskets now we've got a, a shrub that will hold in that side and it's in shadow so I'm using Prussian blue with cadmium yellow and I'm going to be very dark with that put a little bit of brown with that a bit of burnt sienna just to just a little bit of brown but overall it's got to be particularly dark and that's going to go in there going to pick around that basket there we go and this will highlight that basket the edge of that basket and where it hangs out in the lower area or underneath there and let's make it hang up uh, pick up the light side of that and the dark side of that there we are so that's okay I think we'll get away with that you can just ping it out a bit more let's just add a bit more burnt sienna to that just to give a bit of bit of brown and then we've got it hanging out like that there just a bit of edging to it like that it's all going to be shadowed anyway and then on the other side we add cadmium yellow to that to paint the very well the light yew tree that's there there we are it's a bit more yellow than that and just take a bit of moisture off the brush because I want to pick up the way that yew tree catches the light to start with it's a couple of yew trees there really um, actually they sit behind that there we are and then of course as they come down to that area there you've got to pick around that that car right and then with the darker color while it's still damp you've got to try and pick up a bit of tone into that and of course the the right hand side be somewhat darker because it's got no sh no um bit darker there perhaps there we are so that's that lovely old yew tree on the right um right and just before we finish with this business i'm going to use cobalt blue with a little cadmium in there very little to paint in some trees in the background there and they're going to just highlight around those there in that chimney 
So there's a tree there like that. What else is there? Oh, and there's, there's even a bit of, I don't know whether we can see a bit of distance there. That's interesting. Quite blue then. Actually see a bit of depth. Nice bit of blue there as well. There we are. And I'm going to put a little bit in that because what's one side of that chimney should be the other. So that's brilliant. It's come along very nicely. Now windows. Okay. So we're going to have white frames on these. But other than that, I'm just going to suggest the panes of glass like that. One, two, three. One, two, three. That's all I'm going to do for those. Now, can we get away with that? I'm sure we can. Oh, just, and what about the lower areas? Yeah, we'll do the same. A couple of, there we go, that's that. That door is white, but it's got, a, yeah, that's okay. I'm just talking to myself here. And I'm just going to indicate, how many windows have we got here? We've got one window there, one there. One there and one there. Um, may not be quite what they are, but may, may be slightly different, but I'm not too worried because we've got um, three along the lighter. One, two, three. Should be further over, but never mind. One, two, three there. Uh, a doorway there. And there's another one there, I think. But that's not going to be a major thing. It's in the distance. It's light. It's bright. Good. Then we have. Do you know? You may not believe me, but we're getting towards the shadow. Let's add a bit more blue now for the road is quite of a bluey hue. Um, which seems a bit strange, but. That comes up there like that. underneath the car and that sweeps along like that and then we draw it towards us try and get perspective got to do it in the right sort of perspective feel there we are and then we've got just a little bit of area there where you've got the white lining whether we'll be able to pick that up or not i'm not sure there we are and that is the way i'll treat the road see how that works just before we finish a bit of burnt sienna going in here for this um There's a brick wall there. Got some light on it, not a lot, but that's like that. So that's a nice brick wall put in. Um, right, windows. Ah, let's go windows again. Oh, very dark for the car windows. So that's Prussian and Indian red. That's what I'm going to do for that, just to um, there we are. Just if there perhaps there's people in there, I don't know. There certainly are people in here. Well, there's a driver anyway, so we've got to watch. We leave that head there. There we are. Let's just fill that in a bit more. I want to show a little bit of the light on the car. So we're show, showing the underside now with this dark colour. Like that. Just try and pick up where the real dark sides are to that car. Not something I put in very often, but I just felt, I don't know why I wanted to really, but I decided to. 
on this particular room. Um, there we go. We'll see whether that works or whether it doesn't. So that's the car put in. That seems to be fairly, it's coming along quite nicely actually. And just before we finish, the sign. Right, that's on the bluer side too. It's got a lot of shine to it. So what I've got to do, just weaken that. I've got to go around there like that. That's actually meant to be in sunlight. We'll leave the swan in its shape. Okay, let's. Now I'm just picking up the shadows of the building. As you can see, I put them under there, under there, picking around there with the shadows, a little bit down around the figures. The next thing I need to do with that shadow is to put it where the figures sit onto the pavement, like that. Okay. And it's going to cast across some of the back edge of some of these figures. So some of those will be in shadow. See the way I'm picking around certain areas to try and indicate shadow work here and there, backs of some of those figures, but leaving other areas light. And of course, you've got to remember the parasols will also cast a shadow of some sort. So it's not a bad idea just to have an extension like that. Got a bit of shadow coming down over that figure out of picture. There we go. And the shadow mix is Prussian blue and Indian red. That's the mix for that. Don't make it too red. That's the key to this. Right now we have these are in shadow. So we have that. That's in shadow like that. And there's a casting shadow across there and that comes and then of course this gable end is in shadow as well. Like that. I was want, I've want, been wanting to paint this scene for quite a time. And um, it's not always you get the opportunity when you're traveling around painting other areas. Um, but, um, and then of course that casts a shadow like that. Right, and then you can then sneak a little figure in here going down the hill. There we are. Then, of course, the back edge of that bus there and the inside there that also has. And just peel that away there because that's in sunlight, that's good. Yeah, um, oh, and Right, let's mix a little bit stronger shadow now because I'm working more into the foreground area. Don't want to be too dark, um, but um, we do have a shadow under. No, we don't want it green. We do have a shadow under the car like that, slightly to the right, but not to any great extent. That's good. And with, that's in shadow, that would cast a shadow on there, like that, so that goes around those figures. Leave a bit of light here and there just to give an indication of sunlight catching. That figure, uh, that goes down to there like that. Yeah, that's, that's working fine with me. Now, Shadow in the foreground, more blue now, because there's a shadow that runs across there like that, and across there like that. It's real deep, and and a lot of people, you know, they they get panicky when you start putting in shadows of this sort of depth and and an amount really, you know. But to me. It it sets it, it actually sets up 
the picture. And of course, within that shadow, just stroke some red in at the at the angle. That oh, that's a that's a red and a half, isn't it? Put a bit more blue with that. There we go. Just let that blend away. Don't get um, too bogged down with that. And then we've got so like another area like that where we've got a roof of another building. And that uh, hangs out like that. And it comes towards us. So that should work for that. A nice bit of entrance there. And then we have a chimney of some sort standing up there. And then another bit of red like that. A bit more red as it goes out of picture. And that just gives a sense of depth. There we are. It's coming along. Now, some places we will need stronger shadow work. And those places are under there and under there. Um, within the window there like that under like that just down there in there and under there and under there good so that's give that just a little bit more strength also a little bit more don't take too much of that sort of light feel away um, but um, oh and we may be able to see on the undersides of some of these down the back edges of that those parasols like that and then just a little bit into the sunlit area but not too much and then we just sweep them across like that there we are so that they stand out parasols stand out in clear relief a uh, little bit on the figures a little bit of darker stuff on the figures uh, here and there. Just one or two little touches to overdo this. But that all helps to um, pick up the little bit in the lower area there. That's better. It really sharpens up certain parts of that. Now, we're going to go weaker now with that because I've got a little bit of architectural detail to pick out on the church here and that is going to come out like that so that'll have a bit of a shadow that'll have shadows we've got a little bit of this window work that needs shadows put in um, what have we got there Oh, right, yeah, that's the shadow from that. That's in a shadow. That is also in a shadow. Like that. Oh, and that is in shadow there. Bit of shadow there. There we go. There we go. Look at that. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to use a bit of license now because I'm going to paint that in shadow. And that is then going to cast a shadow across there. And then just pick that up like that. There we go. Perfect. Yep. That's looking good. You know. Yeah. I can live with that, I think. And a little bit of shadow then under the, the overhang of those buildings uh, a little bit down the chimney perhaps the overhang there we'll bring a bit of shadow just across there just to show that that's like that a little bit of shadow there like that and I'm also going to mark out 
a hint of where those lines are. That's good. Very weak now. There. With this sort of shadow stuff. Because it's actually in quite strong sunlight. So I'm hoping to try and indicate a bit of reflection. Right. Now we get the rigger out to um, really just to uh, sharpen everything up. And finally, I'm using the mill stick because we do have a, just watch it, I don't put that onto the, right, we do have um, a section for, oh yeah, to support that like that the sign we have one main support that all right so that comes right back to here then okay and then we have must have another one somewhere all oh, right yeah then we have another one that comes from there back to there like that then we have a main support that comes from there down to that windowsill. There we are. Now, when you've got these jiggly uh, pieces of architecture, um, uh, now what are they? Um, areas of um, iron work, um, it's far better not to get too too detailed because um, it can get a little uh, complicated um, and if you're not careful you lose the feeling of uh, of light really which um, we don't want to do um, it really is a matter of show oh let's just highlight the windows just a little bit more just so as there again as I say we don't want to lose that feeling of sunlight but it's vital that um, do we have seals on them no we don't but we do have quite a bit of dark color underneath there so I'm going to put that in there we are now the parasols Right, parasols. Um, let's put a little bit of additional dark stuff under there. No, I don't think we want that. Right, um, ooh. Right, windows. No, we don't want to get complicated with that. There's a window there which will help to show up the parasols there. But we've got that there. We've got putting the little clap caps on the parasols and just marking underneath where they are and down that right hand edge just highlighting the real depth of color that I can see there because that is quite vital because it will make a big difference to the feeling of the whole thing and the, of course that little capping as well really sharpens up the here we go those parasols look at that it's all very dark now and some real dark stuff here for the and then we've got the, the number plate obviously has the writing on we'll leave that at that uh, don't do too much to this background. We want that to shine really light. Um, I don't think we're too far off of this one before we take away the... Um, put the curb stone in. Uh, with some little uprights. There we are. Just give that 
a little bit of depth to that curved stone there. There we are. Let's just um, it just just gives that curved stone a little bit of depth. So that's pretty good. Um, uh, what about this sign? Right. Let me have a think. will be in raw sienna because it's like a gold and that's the nearest I've got to gold is raw sienna so that's the swan sign gone in there do we have anything else that we can relate to that I don't think we do really um, I think we're almost there. Well, I've taken the surround away. Just a couple of things I've noticed. There is a uh, an old lamp that stands out on a bracket here. And it's one of those old sort of um, glass lamps that stands quite high on a I didn't draw this in but it's got a sort of like a tapered feel so it's got a base and then it's got a tapered angle like that then it's got a cap on the top which is the normal thing and I think that probably does it okay yeah I'm happy with that is there any other structure that no I'll leave that at that that's fine and um, there's just another little thing this the swan actually sits on a water area that, uh, that needs laying in like that. So that pretty much does it for that. And is there just a little bit of sort of shading area underneath the swan? There probably is down the neck and just, yep. Yeah. That's sufficient for the swan, I think. Oh, what about a yellow beak? Now, is this a mute swan? Or what sort of swan is it? Well, we're putting a yellow beak on it anyway. Well, there you have it. I think that's pretty much as far as we can really go with this one. Um, just notice uh, my chimneys need just a little bit of colour on them like that there we are there is another chimney there i think there we have it so it just needs signing really now i'm going to sign it in the bottom right hand corner in the paint no let's do the left hand corner don't know why it just feels it balances it better in the paint that i've used if i can get a reasonable signature on here in the manner that i do everything else there we go And that is the Swan Hotel in Thagstead. I'm quite happy with that one. It's come off particularly well. Well, there you have it. I hope you've enjoyed watching me paint this uh, scene of the Swan Inn, uh, Swan Hotel, sorry, uh, in um, Thagstead. Um, it's, you know, it brings me back to that day, very hot day that I spent here in that lovely Essex town. Um, really enjoyed painting that. If you have a chance, you have a go or find a similar subject of your own choice. Um, you never know what you can achieve until you try. If you enjoyed watching that, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, it doesn't cost you anything. You receive notifications when I upload more videos. And in the meantime, happy painting and we'll see you all again very, very soon. Thank you very much for watching.